Well, this is Kat Kerr, and I'm going to give you a revelation report today about worship in the throne room. I have been to uh, heaven many times, been caught up by the Spirit of God and taken to heaven, and one of the most delightful places I love to go to is the throne room. Number one, the Father is there. His throne is high and lifted up. It's in the middle of the throne room, not on the back wall, so that all his kids can be around him all the time. People celebrate there. They worship God there. But one of the most amazing things you'll experience is being a part of the worship in the throne room. When people begin to dance and worship in the throne room, sometimes you're caught up even into the air, right off the floor of the throne room. Uh, when people run through the throne room, beautiful banners. They have a lot of pageantry in the throne room with banners or flags. Whatever's on that flag or that banner, like a line or trumpets, it actually comes to life. It's, it is possible because you're in the supernatural realm called heaven and the giver of life is sitting there on the throne. Everything in heaven comes to life. Even the very throne room itself seems to be alive. When people come in, the more they come in, it actually expands to allow you to come in. But it's, it's an amazing experience to see lions roaring off of the banners and trumpets trumpeting off the banners as people run through the throne room with these 30 and 40 foot banners. Sometimes I've seen a thousand drummers in the throne room doing war beats, and every time those drumsticks strike the drums, lightning bolts come off of them. Uh, it's an amazing thing to be down here on earth in, in, uh, in, a worship, um, in a worship situation and hear that worship team connect with heaven. It's so powerful. God's going to allow that more and more uh, in the days ahead so that we can actually experience throne room worship down here on earth. Um, when people sing in heaven in the throne room, you actually see the worship uh, on earth down here when people sing. I also can see what it looks like in the spirit realm, but in heaven you see ribbons of color coming out of people's mouths, and it weaves these beautiful tap tapestries that become a masterpiece of artwork. And again, when you dance in heaven, the angels come and collect that worship. They put a canvas under your feet, and as you're dancing before uh, the Father or the Son, or the Holy Spirit, you're actually creating a masterpiece with your dance steps. Everyone here on earth has a praise gallery in heaven, and as you worship God, they also collect your worship and put it in your praise gallery so you can see your life lived for them in heaven, what kind of worship that, that made. But in the throne room, the seraphim will come down out of the glory cloud that sits over the throne of God. They have fire come, blue fire coming out of their heads. When people worship in heaven, the living creatures are at the four corners of the throne. They begin to declare, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And when they do that, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, they're caught in the crossfire that worship. An explosion takes place from the throne. And fire and lightning begin to shoot from the throne of God. Waves of glory and love, like liquid love, roll off of him like waves. They engulf everyone in the throne, and then everybody goes down. You don't care if you ever get up. It's so amazing to be able to stand there in that unspeakable glory, to be a part of that in heaven. It's no wonder people want to live in the throne room. But let me tell you, no matter where you go in heaven, you will worship God. The trees worship him. Even the, the clouds worship him. The flowers worship him. Little kids are around Jesus all the time in heaven. They love to be near him. Even the little babies in the nursery, Jesus comes to visit them and they sing to him. You cannot help but fall in love with the Father, with the Son, and with the Holy Spirit in heaven. You don't want to miss being a part of that throne room worship. So I pray that you make the right choice and you make heaven your home so one day you can go and be a part of that worship. Hi, this is Kat Kerr. I'm author of Revealing Heaven. And I'm going to bring you a revelation report from the Father. That's probably one of the most important ones I'll ever give you. Uh, so please pay attention. Uh, you know, we are all saved by grace. That is a free gift from God. That's grace for eternal life. And you can't earn that. You can't work for that. God gives it to you freely. But you know he has more grace for you. It is also free. But you need to ask for that grace. Yes, it talks about it in the Word of God. There's, there's a scripture that says, Come before my throne of grace to find grace. So that's an action. That's something you have to do to get this grace. To find grace for help in time of need. That would be every day of your life. That's grace for abundant life. The Father caught me up one time and said, I'm going to teach you something that will change your life, change the life of anyone who wants to pursue this. And he said, My son is a child 
was filled with this grace. That's why he was able to walk through his life on, on the earth and not, not fall into offense, not be angry, not be anxious. It will literally change your life. It's like receiving fuel from heaven for that day. The Apostle Paul, when he asked continually, take the thorn of flesh from me, and Jesus answered him and said, my grace is sufficient for you. He was talking about that grace for abundant life. So the Father told me one day, I'm tired of you showing up in your living room when you come out of your room with your opinions and your ways and your ideas. And so I'm going to teach you something that will bless your family and bless you. And he caught me up and said that every day before I come out of my bedroom, if I will look up to heaven and say, Father, I ask for and receive grace for this day. He said, we will download fuel from heaven into your being for 24 hours. You will walk in that abundant life. And he said, you will not be offended. You will not have fear enter into your life. He said, it'll so change you that your family will notice. And if you teach them to do the same thing, you will actually live in harmony. Strife won't even be able to come into your home. He said, I made this available for all of my children and that they perish for lack of knowledge. So I am now giving them this knowledge. So everywhere I go, he asked me to teach people that. Trust me, it's free. Just like manna that he made available in the wilderness. If they wanted it, they had to go and get it. But if they didn't get it, they didn't have provision. If you want your life to change significantly, then please, every morning, look up to heaven and ask for that grace. If you have to remind yourself, put a note on your refrigerator, on your mirror, and say, did I ask for grace? Because trust me, if you forget, you will notice. Everyone in your house will notice because you'll be sticking out like a sore thumb, showing up with your attitude and your nitpicking. And I can tell you, we don't have that in my house anymore. My family will vouch for that. We walk in peace and harmony with one another. So if you will just ask, the Father will send it from heaven. So if I were you, I'd ask for grace. And I hope you have a blessed day, and thank you for allowing me to share with you. If you want more information, you can go to my website, revealingheaven.com, and may you always walk in abundant grace. God bless you. Hi, this is Kat Kerr, and I'm the author of Revealing Heaven. And today I'm going to give you a revelation report that is so important. So many people want to know the answer to this question. Will your pets be in heaven? And I can tell you from the heart of the Father, he said absolutely yes. It has nothing to do with a theological discussion or whether they can get saved or not saved. They don't have souls. But God wants you to know that he lets you have them there for one reason. You love them. Uh, before I wrote the book, God had me do a survey of 400 people and asked them all one question. If you could ask God one question about heaven, what would it be? And we went to 400 people aged 5 to 95, different ethnic groups, uh, different places um, you know, in the USA and even Canada, and people even went into some of the biker bars. We wanted to know what their opinions were too. And I can tell you that out of all 400 questions, one third of all those questions was the same. Will our pets be in heaven? It didn't matter if it was a five-year-old, a 17-year-old, or a 95-year-old. They all wanted to know because it mattered to them. And because it matters to you, it matters to God. I was actually shown some of the pets that we had. Uh, me and my siblings growing up as children, uh, even one of my dad's pets he had, and I can tell you it's real. They'll be at your mansion waiting on you, and by the way, if you have cats, they've probably taken over your mansion, and when you come home, they might actually let you live with them because they're very territorial, but honestly, God allows your pets to be there. He even showed me a little boy's goldfish, and now he's prepared that little boy's mansion and made a waterway aquarium that goes through the whole mansion so that fish can swim everywhere, and even visit with his little master when he comes home one day, and even has built this amazing water slide in a pool in this little boy's mansion just for that goldfish. If he cares about a goldfish, he certainly cares about your pet. My own pet, Molly, went home to heaven about a year and a half ago. I'd had her for 16 years, and I was out, you know, preaching the gospel and sharing heaven all over the place, and my mom called and said she didn't think she'd last till I got home. The Holy Spirit assured me that she would, and I can tell you, Molly's favorite thing to do was at 11 o'clock every day, she'd be waiting at the mail slot for the mailman to drop the mail through. She'd grab that mail and run all through our house, just dropping everywhere, growling at it. And then usually she'd shred the mail. Thank God it was only the part that had the, the junk mail in it, you know. Uh, but that was her favorite thing to do. And uh, I knew she'd go home to heaven. People didn't have to, uh, you know, discuss that with me. 
And so she waited for me to come home. I sat up all night long telling her how happy I was that she'd been a part of my life. God had blessed me with her. And then I just finally released her to the Lord, and God took her on home to heaven. Actually, my guardian angel took her home to heaven. That's how your pet gets there. And then a couple hours later, I was just doing normal things around the home, and God opened the ceiling of my home, and he let me see my dog, who looked beautiful and young again. She was running down the streets of gold, and she had two letters in her mouth. Now I can tell you, heaven does not have a mail system, okay? You're not going to wait for mail to come from heaven. But she was running with these letters in her mouth, and I thought, that is the strangest thing. And then God let me see what was in front of her, and it was an angel wearing a postman's outfit. I know some people will watch this and say, who cares about that? That's meaningless. Well, let me tell you, one-third of all the people in this world care, and that's why God cares. And so I, I saw this angel running with letters in this uh, pouch, and he kept dropping them behind him every now and then. And she was running and growling after him. Then all of a sudden, he let me see the other hundred dogs running behind my dog down the streets of gold, grabbing these letters and chasing this postman. And it blessed my heart to know that God didn't just care about me and what he had ready for me, but he cared about my dog. I know she's enjoying her life up there, and one day I'll see her again, as well as all the other hundreds of pets that my siblings and I had growing up together. I just want you to know that God loves you, and, he, and it matters to him what matters to you. And so if you had a pet or an animal that you cared very much about, then it will be waiting for you in heaven. I can warn you of this. That if you ever ride by and see some dead animal in the road, a raccoon or a deer or something, you go, oh, that poor little pet, you probably just got it in heaven on your mansion. I can tell you that my daughter rescues turtles out of the road all the time. I told her her mansion's probably going to be swamped with turtles because I'm sure everyone she rescued, when it died, she got it in her mansion. So just remember this, whatever you claim is yours, if some poor little thing on the side of the road, you better be expecting to see it in heaven. And God does it for one reason because you love it. So I hope you be blessed this day. If you want to know more, you can go to my website, revealingheaven.com, or get my book, Revealing Heaven. And I hope to see you in heaven one day.